Yeah, it was. Uh, I must say, credit must go to the Bulls. I think they uh, they really played a, a good match. Uh, they put us under pressure. It's something uh, we haven't experienced this uh, season so far. So yeah, there's some good learnings from it. And um, yeah, but uh, was today just uh, taking what we learned from it and immediately moving on to to the game on Saturday. What were some of those lessons uh, learned from the game? I think it's um, yeah, they they certain areas that they targeted and uh, yeah, they cl they closed our space. Um, it's, uh, it's something we haven't experienced. Uh, although there was there was opportunities uh, around uh, you know, what they presented, and we uh, we we used to take the right options uh, this, throughout the season. I think uh, on Saturday we didn't take the right options. So maybe that was just uh, you know making sure that we, we stick to the plan that we had and uh, we went off it a little bit and uh, yeah, that, that, that's where we felt the pressure. Um, you guys sort of handled the team with um, light speed on defence and, and that's where you, you won most of your games throughout the regular season and, and the Bulls did that to you guys. Was it maybe a case that you haven't experienced um, that in the round robin games uh, but you made it up for something? Yeah, I mean, their the, the defence is, is different than, than most of the teams. Yeah, uh, some of the teams have line speed, but not, not exactly the same uh, same speed that the, the Bulls have. Um, yeah, so I, I think we just took a bit of time to adjust onto it, uh, even though we prepared for it. Uh, but, I, but I must say, the Bulls did, it, yeah, did their homework well, and they, you know, they, they executed well. Yeah, so you, also doesn't help you have line speed if you're not making good tackles, but I think they made good tackles and quality tackles. Um, how do you, how do the yeah, at this stage of the season, it's uh, it's been a long season, so um, the guys will now uh, today. You know, the last three weeks, we haven't trained on a Monday, so just to get the bodies ready. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll have a training session tomorrow and one on Thursday again. But um, yeah, we'll just make sure that we we get the niggle sorted and that we everyone's 100 percent and fresh for for Saturday. And not doing anything different this week. No, no, we won't change. I mean, you've spoke in the, after the game about how maybe overshot it a bit in terms of trying to play and um, you know, kind of semi-final and maybe different approach was required. Do you think this weekend could be something resembling finals rugby a bit more as opposed to what you guys have been doing throughout the season so far? Um, no, I think we, we will stick to our strengths. Um, yeah, obviously, playoff rugby, uh, the, uh, it is a bit different, different pressure. Um, you know, so, uh, but we must we must get our balance right. I think uh, at stages when we were we were attacking this weekend, it probably went on, and in the stages when we kicked, we didn't kick well. And that, uh, I think that what that was one of our strengths this season is not just attacking, but uh, you know, having good good kicking game as well. And uh, that that wasn't great this weekend. Though. No, I don't think so because uh, last year we obviously we were a bit of the underdogs going into into the game in, uh, in Durban last year, but we also beat them in the round robin stages, uh, so we knew we, we could win. You know, so it wasn't uh, nothing in the game for us. Um, obviously, playing at home is, will be different for us. So we're in front of our own, own crowd, and uh, I'm sure it's exciting for the players, and they want to play in front of their crowd. It's something we worked uh, towards as a team. Um, so obviously the, the pressure of the final will be there, but uh, we're going to embrace it and we're actually just going to go out there and, and uh, be ourselves and, and enjoy the moment and, uh, and try and play the rugby that we've been playing. Uh, okay, uh, we saw the turnaround in seven days for the Bulls, losing 34-7 in one half. We're going to extra time. Last time we played the Sharks, you put 50 points on them at Newlands. Um, you take anything out of that game going to uh, no, I think it will be a different game. Um, you know, it's, it's also that uh, I know we put 50, game, 50 points on the Sharks, but at a stage that game was, was quite tight with 31-28. Uh, we they sort of had the momentum in, in the in the match, but um, you know, it's, a, it's a new 80 minutes. It's, uh, it's one or two things we can maybe take out in terms of uh, the opportunities we created in that game. Um, but no, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see this 0-0 uh, and, and we'll take it from there. You guys were lucky over the weekend. Um, you guys have now analysed the game. Um, do you concur with that, or do you think that you guys did actually 
do enough and deserve the win? I, I definitely think we did enough. Um, you know, it's, it's the first time we've, we've had pressure and we, we came close and that, that's probably why people would say we were lucky. But we were leading with five points uh, with that last scrum you know, before, before extra time. Um, and if we just kicked it out there, we almost would have won, that, won the game. Um, not easily, but we had to work hard for it. But um, yeah, I don't think we were lucky. The guys, the guys really uh, kept cool heads, um, made, made good decisions, especially in that uh, extra time. Um, so the credit must go to the players in terms of uh, handling the pressure and then uh, getting the win. Um, after the game, John actually said that you guys wanted to be stressed yesterday, but maybe not quite like that. But if you just look outside that day, was it something that should stand in us in the future in the final? Yeah, I mean, uh, it is a, a good scenario to be in to, to, to see the character of your team and then also just reflect on it and, and look at the decisions that, that you had to make on the, on the field in, in, a, in an environment where, okay, this game is, is going to go tight and it's going to go down to the wire. So. It's good. I think it's a great for us to be in that scenario before before Saturday's game, um, and I'm sure uh, what we've learned from that will, will help us this weekend. Darby, um, from an injury perspective, are you looking um, we should assume Yanu is back? Um, and, and Paul, like uh, yeah, Paul, Paul uh, yeah, did his ankle, so I think he might be out for this weekend. Um, at this stage, we're not sure about Yanu. Um, if he's going to make it back, but uh, the guy like Justin Phillips is he's up and running again. So yeah, we've got those two options. There. And for the rest, there's no there's no injuries or new injuries. When will you decide when you're going? Uh, well, we'll give him as long as possible. Dylan, from, from your side, I mean, as a player being in that situation and describing the game over the weekend, I mean, you know, we hear people talk about the Curry Cup being dead and interest in the tournament waning. Um, yeah, it was it was really special. I think you could see by the all the emotion showed on the on the bench and next to the sideline by every single player and every single management member that was um, on the sidelines as well. You know, obviously a lot's been said about the Curry Cup and uh, the way it's it's it's, uh, it's gone on. You know, we're just thankful that people people uh, still want to turn up. Uh, to Newlands to, to come and watch us play and I think we've we've done ourselves proud up until now by, by playing the type of rugby we've been playing to, to draw the crowd back to Newlands and you now hopefully for this weekend you know we'll, we'll see an even bigger crowd and obviously I think the guys drew a lot of it took a lot of energy from um, you know the crowd in, the, in those last uh, uh, 20 minutes of extra time so I think you know all's good and well with, with Curry Cup rugby. Obviously, the the defence put us under pressure, but we I don't I wouldn't say we had less time on the ball. I think they were very accurate in what they were trying to do, which obviously put us under pressure. But like Darby said, you know, throughout the campaign, when we've been in, in put in those situations, we would have made the right decision. And I think uh, on Saturday we we sort of just probably chose the, the safer option, if I can say that. You know, so I think we we had meetings today where those uh, opportunities that we had, which we didn't take, were discussed, and you know where we can we can we can improve, and you know it's it's obviously up to us, you know, just to to back uh, the way we've been playing, back the the, the style that we we want to produce every weekend. I think we've we've definitely got the guys in and around this team to be able to do that. So like the the defense did put us under a bit of pressure, but I think we also made it hard for ourselves at times. Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. yeah I think uh, Egan Egan pinned them for for a few sides, um, but yeah, I mean if you, they they definitely pushed the boundary uh, in terms of closing our space down. Uh, yeah, and that, yeah, we also felt there's one or two they maybe let let go, but 
you could see in the, the Bulls' mindset was uh, whatever they, they wanted to come and do is not, not to give us uh, time and, and space on the ball. Um, and like uh, Dylan said, they did it successfully at stages, and then some stages it was, was a bit edgy. And um, is that something that uh, the, the captain will have to handle on the field, or you guys handle it in the discussion with the referee? Or yeah, how about that? yeah we'll, we'll chat in the week. I mean, uh, the Bulls were one of the teams that conceded the most uh, penalties for being off sides uh, throughout the campaign. So you know, we had that information through to Egan before the, the match. but. Yeah, obviously the captain. Um, if there's if there's an issue, um, you know, and we f we feel that uh, we we're not getting rewarded, uh, it's his responsibility to have uh, the communication of the ref and, and also his ARs to, to help him with that. Davi, where do you see the, the Sharks' biggest threat come from? I mean, they have quite a strong pack, but also uh, deal apart from the fact we saw Sabuni Corsi scoring two tries at the weekend. I mean, yeah, the Sharks again. I think they're a well balanced side. Um, they've got a uh, yeah, good set piece, uh, they're very physical, but also their forwards uh, like to offload, yeah, so they, they can get the ball away and they can, they can keep it alive. And then with uh, Louis, Rob and Kerwin, they've got a good kicking game and uh, their centres are also quite hard running centres. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough team to, to prepare against and, uh, and to play against, um, so we, we will have to be at our best. Um, yeah, it's obviously very exciting. Hopefully, well, today's but a good day, so hopefully Saturday will be as 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 good as it is outside at the moment. So we'll we'll get to see some exciting rugby. I think both backlines have got some uh, really talented guys in them. So you know, it's obviously for us a good test as well um, to to see how we go against their backs. You know, who have got a couple of spring box in it. So. I think it's it's a it's a going to be a good challenge for us. Um, we obviously know where their strengths lie, and, and they obviously know the same about us. But you know, at the end of the day, I think it's it's just going to be about who's going to execute uh, under pressure and, and and take those opportunities that that uh, you know, gets uh, presented to. Dylan said that you guys you got the sense you know before the second half of extra time that you guys were incredibly calm and controlled. Uh, what was the key for that? I think yeah, we've this whole campaign. It, it, everything's really been, you know, <coughs> player driven, and we've we've uh, talked about our own standards throughout the campaign. You know, every session we we want to walk off and be able to to judge ourselves and say that we've improved. And I think the coaches have 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 allowed us, you know, to to not uh, I won't say take full control, but to really make this campaign ab about us as 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 a group. And I think everyone bought into that early on. So you know, even in our in our leadership meetings, you know, once things uh, get discussed, it's it's always a case of the coaches saying, you know, listen, how do you guys feel about this? So I think in those critical situations, we had guys in the field who were who were pretty calm in, in knowing that uh, they've got four, 15 guys out there willing to to go that extra mile and and not. Uh, not panic about uh, getting to the end result, but just staying calm and, and uh, sort of knowing what we have to do to, to ensure that we walk off the field with a win. So I think the guys handled it really well. Rowan, um, your battle with the former Simmons teammate, Dylan, was quite a, a battle royale, actually. Both went for it, strong carries defensively. Uh, how was it for you? Well, obviously, I'm, I think, first of all, I'm really glad for Seiji that he that he obviously got his opportunity at the Bulls. Um, yeah, look, going into the weekend, I knew exactly, you know, Sage is also like a quite a fierce defender knowing him from the sevens. So, um, yeah, I knew that he was probably going to check me, um, you know, he was going to have his eye on me, on me throughout the whole game. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, I knew ball in hand, Sage can be quite lethal, uh, you know, when you give him some space. Um, but, yeah, I mean, same as him that he was checking me, I knew exactly that I needed to check him. Um, but yeah, I mean, even during the week leading up, I actually called him and then I said, you know, of all the weeks you chose to play, 
I started 13 inches this week. So. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. I, yeah, but yeah, during the week, I actually just called him and said, listen, I'm, I'm really glad for all the best. And uh, yeah, let's, let's make it a good one. Let's go hard with one another. So yeah, I'm glad uh, that we've got to go against one another. And the, and the Bulls attack also, Yeah, definitely. Look, um, Johnny Coates and Dylan Sage, even last week when we played, uh, you know, Franco and there was on 12. Uh, we know that centers like to come on a hard, short line. Um, you know, so that was something that we were aware of, not only for the centers, you know, us defending it, but I think for the forwards to make them aware as well. So, um, yeah, look, the, the ball attack, but they come around the corner pretty hard, the backs run hard. So, uh, you know, that actually just places us under a bit of pressure defensively to get up off the ground, you know, work around the corner, set our lines quick to try and stop their momentum because. You know, you got guys like Duncan Matthews at the back, you know, like you said, Dylan Sage, Monty Lobov, these guys in space can be quite lethal. So it was a challenge, but I, I think we actually handled it well. And in terms of the province attack, going into the final first half, guys, things didn't really go your way, but second half, it just seemed to, uh, as a unit, you guys really came together and you got that touch back. Yeah, I think that's one of the, you know, that's, that's one good character of a, of a good team, you know, is, is, is being able to adjust to the situation that you face. So obviously, we went in with a plan. Uh, not always executed according to the plan, um, but I think that just shows you know the character of the team, you know, and the, the mental ability, the, the mental ability of the team, you know, to adjust from one half to another. Um, the Bulls came quite off and hard off the line right through until the hundredth minute, um, you know. But I think once again, you know, fighting back, getting three points when it's on offer, um, you know, clawing your way, clawing your way back to to the lead and then just sticking out to the end uh, shows great character from the team. Ron, in, in, a, in a final, um, how difficult is it to trust your instincts and you know continue to do what you've done, sort of leading up to the final while also being wary of the pressure and, and making mistakes? Yeah, I think I think a positive is, um, or let's say a positive. I think that's a challenge for us is you know going into a final with absolute freedom. I think sometimes you can get into a box when you try and think about the pressure. You can either crack under the pressure or you can step up. So. Um, I know Darby and them actually promote us, you know, just to play freely, to play what you see in front of you. So I think that'll be our, our, our you know, mindset going into the game is, uh, you know, what got us here in the first place is the ability for us to play, you know, to play what we see in front of us, um, you know, and with the backline that we have and, you know, forwards that we have. Um, it's quite an expressive type of play that we do. So we enjoy playing that type of play. And I don't think, you know, if, we, if we're going to start changing stuff, we're going to start changing who we are as a team. So, um, you know, what got us here up until this point is probably what, uh, you know, we need to stick with. Look, we, they've got big loose forwards carrying. Uh, we know that the Priya brothers like Conte. I'm going to take Conte, check for offloads, very versatile forwards. Um, you know, obviously, the backs, you've got Sigmund Corsi back, uh, training with him for two weeks at the box. I know he's a very fired up guy. You know, he brings always 100% to training. So, um, you know, Cohen Bosch, Rob the Priya, as Darby mentioned, has got a big boot on them. So, they'll, they'll be looking for space as well. Um, yeah, so I think all around they're quite a good team. You know, they can attack, they can put you into space, they can put you under pressure forwards as well. Um, so yeah, I think all in all, I can't actually pinpoint the weakness of the, the weakness of them. I think we just have to be, you know, as as properly prepared as we can be going into the weekend. Um, if you take a look at uh, the breakthrough season last year, you won the Curry Cup, uh, enjoying with the with the team. Um, what has been different, would you say, um, this season for you in terms of? Adjusting to to 15s full time, and and then then also um, looking ahead uh, at, at, at what you want to achieve achieve in 15. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, it's been a it's been a roller coaster yeah, for me. Uh, you know, going straight after World Series into World Cup, Curry Cup, joining the box for two weeks. Um, you know, so it's 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 been one good year so far. Uh, naturally, for me, I actually, I actually just wanted to use the Curry Cup to get back into the swing of things, you know, full time. So um, obviously getting the call up was quite a, a surprise and something I'm very thankful for. Uh, but I guess for me just now, you know, it's just whatever happens, happens now in the future. But for me, it's just conforming completely to the 15th mindset you know, working in my craft. I'm still struggling with one or two habits, you know, that you, that you bring along from sevens. Um, but yeah, for me, obviously, I just wanted to use this time just to, you know, get fully into that position that I wanted to play. Uh, looking forward to next year super active and hopefully I can be in the best shape that I possibly can be. Uh, if I get selected, that I'll be able to do my part. Uh, Rob, um, with being in a number of pressure situations with the blitz box, is there something that you can take across mentally, especially going into this final? Yeah, I think you know playing sevens, it's uh, it's it's quite a, a high risk game. You know, one mistake can cost you seven points. So 
Um, I think when you know you exposed to that situation quite a lot, so uh, that definitely helps me on the field. Um, you know, the senior guys around me as well. Like we all we all feed up one another. So uh, for me, it's uh, you know I just revert back to that situation. It's just trying to remain calm in all situations, uh, even though the pressure was up Saturday evening. Uh, you know, but it's like I said, like you can either crack under that pressure or just try and remain calm and just focus on the task at hand. There was a crack there, I didn't hear it myself, but Robert mentioned uh, on radio, I heard that you um, talked to the team during, I think, half time and extra time. You were talking about breathing, breathing in and out, something like that. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. Just what exactly you did and where it comes from. So. Yeah, like I think, obviously, you know, when, when the full time whistle went, we all knew it's going to be 20 minutes, you know, either way. Um, yeah, but I think, you know, in, in, in that state of mind, when you panic, I think you can shut down. You know, you don't need to hear what you want to hear. So, yeah, I, the basic thing about that, behind the breath is we do at the sevens is basically just to try and slow your heart rate down, which obviously opens up the ears. You know, it makes you more uh, acceptable towards information you want to get through. Uh, and it also just brings a bit of a calmness around the team as well. Um, you know, when everybody's a bit frantic, you lose each other. Some guys are on one page, another guys on other pages. So it just brings a bit of a calmness, get everybody back to, you know, page one and now. Uh, we regroup, get a plan, and we just work from there. Dylan, was that quite an important <coughs> aspect around our breathing? And Definitely. I think it's something that, that we want, uh, obviously brought across from the sevens. Uh, it's something that we've been doing throughout the campaign. You know, whenever we've scored a tie, we all get together, and everyone knows. First thing we do is we have a breath uh, on Ruan, and then after that, you know, Pickles will, will have his message, or we'll get a message from the coaches. You know, just as to uh, what the next plan is and, and what we're looking to do uh, after that. So, like Rowan said, it really brings a calming factor to the team, you know, and everyone ears is open, they're listening to what the next message is and what we want to go, the plan that we want to go out and execute from there. It's just like a slow in and out. Yeah, it's, it's just like, yeah, it's a, it's a slow. I think, well, I yeah, look, you've been breathing quite heavily then, so uh, yeah. I think it's just important just to slow it a bit down, you know, yeah. just get everyone in the just same a few seconds. Yeah, look, we'll go for one, two, sometimes maybe even three, depending on you know, how tired the guys are. So, yeah, it's just a nice calming thing. Just one more thing, sorry, Harvey. Um, just a word on Virtual Yankees and how he's gone. Uh, you know, Thomas spoke about how big you are as a model for this team. Um, if you needed to, uh, a young guy like that in the Curry Cup final, how you think you'd handle the situation? I mean, I think it's, a great, it's been a great season for Herschel. Um, yeah, he's, he's done his part when he, when he had the opportunity. Um, yeah, so we've got full confidence in, in him if he has to do the job. Um, I think also this weekend he, he experienced uh, yeah, a bit of pressure um, and that will definitely help him um, and we'll work on that, that type of stuff uh, throughout the week. Um, but yeah, we're happy with where Herschel is, um, but it's not just about Herschel, it's about the guys around him you know, to give him the right information. So I mean, we, sometimes the individuals you're looking for them to perform in a team, but it's uh, also about the guys around them, uh, just to, to help them to make the right decisions. How are you guys feeling physically? Uh, are you knackered and let's say you've got to go to extra time again? Are you guys uh, confident that the body's going to you know. you know, Look, uh, yeah, that, that thing, playing 100 minutes of rugby against a you know, pretty motivated bull side actually takes quite physically a bit out of you. Um, but I actually texted Wilco and Dan on Sunday and I said, listen, yeah, if we had to go for another 30 again, it's a fresh shock. So <coughs> today, 5 o'clock, I'll be on that field ready to go with him. So um, I think, you know, playing in a Curry Cup final is motivation enough, you know, on its own. So um, I can promise you now, if I'm feeling the way I'm feeling now on Saturday morning, um, you know, my motivation will be far bigger than I think my physical uh, fatigue that I'm actually you know, experiencing that stage, but you know, as, as far as the bodies go, Monday obviously is a bit of a it's a bit of a slow start. The boys are still feeling a bit um, from the weekend, but obviously as the week goes on, we try and get a bit more movable, uh, building it up until the weekend. But yeah, and I think come the weekend we'll be definitely up for it. And everything you've experienced um, as, as a player has obviously gone very high. How's, how's the curry cup for you? Is it uh, how's the, is it is there something to it that that's special? Yeah, if I look. Um, the Curry Cup is definitely special, I think this year more than ever, you know, uh, people have, have been saying, you know, the Curry Cup is, is dead and it's going downhill, but, uh, you know, I think looking just back at my journey this year, um, you know, this, this is where Coach Rossi and them actually saw me and obviously saw something special in me, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a platform that I was given, and, uh, you know, through that, making the best of that opportunity, obviously got an opportunity for high honors, and, you know, I think it could have been easily that I could have been in the match 23 for Australia or New Zealand, you never know what 
what Kesh Rassi and them were thinking. So um, it just goes to show, you know, that the Curry Cup is not down. Like people are watching, the right eyes are watching on you. So um, yeah, and I think I'm a, I'm a testimony towards that, that you can be, you know, obviously picked out of Curry Cup. But also the fact that um, uh, you never really played uh, Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, that's uh, it's obviously hard work that goes in there. Um, a lot of hard work. Um, uh, just like you said, I, I never played provincial rugby. You know, growing up, I think under twenty one, I played two or three games for the Lions under twenty one. Um, yeah, not an easy path. You know, getting forward to where I am today. But obviously, I won't change it for the world. I've learned a lot. You know, growing as a player. Uh, you know, facing some challenges, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a re rewarding season or two for the last. I've actually said for the last four years since I actually joined the Sevens, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a big learning curve and uh, yeah, it's, it's something that I'm pretty proud of. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, we'll have dinner one-on-one -on -one with ETV writers. If you